So let's go ahead and get started. My name is Eric Widener. I'm with the KM Institute. I'm the VP of Business Development. I handle most of our external content and uh, host uh, webinars such as this. I'd like to introduce Stephanie Barnes, who's been a longtime collaborator and, and a friend of KMI. And uh, she has actually hosted a couple of, of these gatherings. Let me let a few more folks in. On this particular theme of Radical KM, which is really about I guess, adopting uh, creative ideas and creative methods to do what would be traditional KM. So it's really interesting and uh, we love hearing more about this. So we thought, let's put together a couple of webinars. Let's do a couple of blogs on this. So there are a few blogs at the website that uh, Stephanie has already uh, published and we can always circle back to that later. But let me show you, since we have the site uh, shared screen here, um, whenever you'd like to see any webinars from KMI, including uh, several Stephanie's, just go to kminstitute.org back to the homepage, uh, and then hover over webinars. And this is where all of our free content is listed. We have some great presentations from just the last year or two. Uh, and then if you go specifically to the KMI webinar series, that's where these webinars and other recordings are loaded. So you can come here and just scroll down. You can see we've been very busy just the last couple of months. Uh, and this just keeps going. So lots of good content here at your disposal whenever you'd like to come back and check out some free, uh, interesting content that most uh, CAM professionals can use. So, um, but let me get back to Stephanie. Again, Stephanie, um, thank you so much for joining us today and for hosting this. Um, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you and, and stop the share and I'll continue to monitor uh, chat and uh, participants. Great, thanks, Eric. Yeah, if you can um, monitor that chat window for me. And where did my, I don't know why Zoom always does this to me. Um, Hang on, let me, let me fix this, sorry. It doesn't like to find my PowerPoint for some reason. So there we go. Now you can see my PowerPoint. Excellent, okay. And let me fix this. Okay, oops, okay. I don't know, <laughs> I think we'll, oh. Sorry, I'm a little disorganized today. Um, <laughs> sorry. So yeah, so Radical KM. So I did a, a one last month about generally what it was. And this is this month's installment is why you should care. So for those of you who weren't on the first one, there is some overlap. So I explain the basic idea behind it um, before I get into the, the new content. So don't worry if you weren't on the last one. So for those of you who don't know me, and I didn't recognize some names here, so I know some of you know me, um, I, I have a, an undergrad in accounting and an MBA in IT, um, have worked as a knowledge management consultant um, independently for 18 years this year, and uh, before that I did knowledge management at Hewlett Packard for four years out of the seven that I was with them. So I am Canadian, but am based in Berlin. I've lived in Berlin now for um, five and a half years. So um, yeah, this is where you find me from a geographic perspective. So, um, and I like to start my sessions off with a little guided meditation, um, just to get us centered and focused on what we're about to take in, the information that we're about to take in, and, and to signal this is something new and something different. So I'm hoping that no one is driving and that you're all safe in a home office or an office someplace or um, yeah, someplace quiet where you can close your eyes and, and get comfortable. And take a slow, deep breath and closing your eyes. Picture in your mind's eye a small and delicate flower floating gently inside your skull. Just behind the bone of your forehead. Notice the flower's color. Its shape. The pattern of its petals. Let the flower drift slowly downward.
Sliding gently down your throat into your rib cage. Drifting down and down between your lungs. Downward, gently downward. Coming to rest in the lowest place in your abdomen. The place where your breath reaches when you breathe fully and deeply. A quiet touch of color deep in the darkness of your abdomen. Hold the flower there. Hold it. Hold it. Now let it go. Let the flower vanish. But stay focused on the place where it was, deep down in the dark center of you. Focus on the darkness. Now, when you're ready, and only when you're ready, open your eyes and come back into our virtual room. Everybody back. Okay. Oops. How was that for everybody? If anybody wants to write anything in the chat about how that was for you, how that was that hard, was it easy? Um, yeah, how did that feel to you? Did not let, like letting go of the flower. Um, let's see what's in the chat window here. Oh, thank you. I'm glad that you like that. It's a great beginning. Great way. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad you like that. Okay. So getting into what is radical knowledge management and, and our reason for radical knowledge management. Folks today, employees today, staff today want to be more engaged. They want to be more collaborative. They want to be more creative. They want to be more innovative, better at executing and implementing new ideas. They want to take some more risks. They want to be seen as individuals, all of these things. They want to be coached and not managed. Um, understand the big picture, even though they may be working in, in, a, you know, in a more tactical role, they like to, to understand, you know, the reason for the things that they're doing. Um, so yeah, these, these are some of the things that, that our staff um, today want, or knowledge workers today want. In the bigger environment, we've got all this volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity, VUCA, um, I usually just say the, the short form, form, so, but if you're not familiar with that acronym, um, it stands, VUCA stands for, for all those things, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. These things creating all this confusion um, in our lives. Which way to go? What should we do now? You know, I think we've seen this in spades for sure in, in the pandemic. It's just made it even more. You know, rules are changing every day. Um, you know, do I have to wear a mask? What mask do I have to wear? How many people I'm allowed to meet with? You know, where can I get a vaccine? Is it my turn to get a vaccine? Um, all of these things. You know, am I working from home today? Am I allowed to go in the office? Um, what are we using Zoom? Are we using Teams? You know, all this 
not knowing um, how things go and what what to choose and what what to do. So we've got these what workers want, and then we've got sort of the demands of the the environment that we're looking at. Um, to, to consider it as well. So when I put together Radical KM, I kind of had all those things in mind and, and all of my background as a knowledge management consultant and artist. Um, I started painting, you can see my, a little bit, my studio behind me, I started painting in, in 2011. And um, so that's informed my thinking on this and, and how, to, how to deal with VUCA. Um, and so that's sort of what all came together last year and to take something that I had been calling creative KM up until that point and, and yeah, started calling it radical KM last September, October and, and felt like that was a much better descriptor for our, our chaotic times of doing something radically different rather than just the analytical and what's perceived as the practical. Um, but to add some creativity into to things and, and help build that space and give ourselves that, that space. So radical knowledge management is, is really, it's not that the things that we've been doing are going away, it, they're not. We still do people process technology, you know, CAM at the center of it, having a strategy, understanding what the needs of the organization are. And those things are still necessary. It's just that given, the, the wider social con the construct and the, the economic situation, those things really aren't, aren't enough anymore. And so we um, not just add creativity in, but add it in and it's actually a multiplier because it, it affects everything um, in, and transforms everything. So to create radical knowledge management at the end. So, Radical, one of the meanings of radical, once I came up with the, the word or chose the word, um, I discovered that radical means about going back to, to roots. And so I, that was even more reason for me to call it radical knowledge management because it's, it's about adding not just being analytical, but also being um, creative as well. And so putting that back into the equation, going back to the our roots of being both analytical and, and creative. So in the past, knowledge management has been about lessons learned, communities practice, you know, all of these things that we know, collaboration and technology and, and documenting knowledge for later retrieval. And, and that's useful and necessary, um, certainly still going forward. But in the present and the future, we need to be better able to deal with uncertainty, the need to continuously learn because things are changing so quickly we need to be able to iterate and not be afraid of making errors and, and we need to ask questions and try things out and see what works and the, what doesn't work so that we have the, the data and the experience of saying, no, in this situation, that doesn't work. Yes, in this situation, this works. Um, and we need to be able to adapt and be flexible to an ever-changing environment. And so adding creativity and, and helping people get back in touch with their creativity and those, thing, those creative behaviors um, helps them to adopt and helps our organizations to, to adopt. So we need to be have space for being creative as well as analytical, not just um, analytical, the way we have been for, for you know, at least a hundred years, a bit more than that. Um, and when we bring technology into the, the equation, creativity is, is what differentiates us from, from AI. When I talk to people about knowledge management, at least in some corners, um, people get all excited about the possibilities of, of AI. And yes, that's absolutely true. AI is going to do some interesting and useful things. But as human beings, what differentiates us and you know, hopefully gives us a bit of job security, if such a thing exists, is our creativity and being able to tap into that. And because AI is going to take over the, the stuff that you know, the, the databases and the, the knowledge retrieval stuff. So we have to do the stuff that the AI can't do and AI can't do creativity and no matter what anybody tries to tell you. <laughs> so, and why do we need to relearn our creativity? Because it got educated out of us. We've had this model for say over a hundred years um, going back to 
the late 1800s, early 1900s, very early 1900s, this production line thinking, this factory thinking of, of how we need to do our jobs and you know specialize and compartmentalize and, and try and to separate things into ever decreasing boxes, um, sizes of boxes. And, and you know, but the truth of this, the matter is that things are organization in our world are increasingly complex and interconnected and we need to be able to adapt to that and not cut it down into slices because it's the magic happens in between in the, in the white space in between the boxes um, that, and that's we need to get better at that at integrating that and being okay that with the stuff that falls outside of the box so there's a bunch of benefits of creativity. Um, these come from Sir Kenneth Robinson, who unfortunately passed away recently. Um, he's done a lot of work in this area. I love this list that, that he came up with. I'm not gonna read you the whole list. You can read it while I'm talking here. Um, but tying into knowledge management is that creativity encouraged, let, encourages lifelong learners. And in knowledge management, we need to, part of knowledge management's reason for being is to help organizations learn um, and help the people in our organizations learn. So that creativity helps us learn um, and the, the play and the, the playfulness that comes out of that um, is critical to, to learning. And it's the way that we learned as children um, and it's the way that we need to tap back into now um, as, as adults. Plus, you know, it's fun um, and it's, it's good to have fun sometimes. Um, so, and not just be serious, deadly serious. Um, so yeah, I know that's a, a taboo thing in some organizations to have some, some fun, but, but I like to have some fun. And so, and how do we unlock our creativity? Allow yourself to be foolish. Put on a clown nose. <laughs> Let's see if anybody's noticing, you know. Um, that's what I like to do. See if anybody's noticing. See if they're paying attention. I sneak my clown nose on in the middle of the Zoom. Um, stop thinking that there is one right answer. There's lots of right answers. Um, I, know I have an accounting background. You, know, you would think that accounting was pretty... Um, you know, one plus one equals two. And, and I used to say, well, you know, one plus one, that could be 11. Um, that could be, you know, a lot of things. Um, maybe it's what I used to say sometimes, what would you like it to be? You know, should it be three today? Um, is there some synergy involved in that? So one plus one makes more than, than two. Play, stop following the rules challenge the rules ask why are we still doing this why are we doing this we've done this for this way for 30 years it's time we reconsider how we're doing this um, and stop thinking that something that's not your area just because you may not have expertise in it you know have a beginner's mind it comes from uh, that's a buddhist book i think or something that's come from buddhism that beginner's mind so that that innocence that you know this is what i say to people i'm self taught self-taught with my art I don't know the rules I just do what I like to do so and, and people say well how did you know to do that where did you learn that from and I'm like I made it up <laughs> a few years ago I did a series of paintings that had zippers in them and a curator I know here in Berlin said to me where did you see that said, that's really interesting she really liked that idea she said, where did you where did you see that where did you learn that I'm like I didn't see that I just thought about what I wanted to do what I was trying to depict in these paintings and and thought zippers open up. I was trying to convey the idea of opening up. And so she's like, was really impressed. And I'm like, okay, this is, so it pays not to know the rules. I didn't know the rule that said I wasn't supposed to put a, paint, a zipper in my painting. So stop being worried about, about that. So do things that are, like I say, are fun. I'm gonna take my nose off of this, but, um, you know, I do improv, I do this, in little, you can do things like this and drawing, we're gonna do another activity in a few minutes, but little things that just adds a bit of fun, a little different perspective, get people out of their comfort zones. You know, we all do so many Zoom meetings a day, do something that, that 
you know, stirs things up a little bit that encourages some curiosity and, and some storytelling. So um, yeah, there's lots of improv games that you know take five or 10 minutes to do, but really shift people's energy and shifts their engagement and yeah, helps open up windows and doors to, to other ideas and, and doing things differently. So the other thing with creativity is, is bringing it in, helps us bring our, our whole authentic self to, to work, um, which is a good thing. And, you know, and this is one of the benefits I think of, of the pandemic is we've all seen each other a little bit more informally, seen the person behind the, the what gets presented in, in the office environment. We've seen pets and home offices and um, kids and, and things, and it's made us us more human, hopefully. Certainly from my perspective, this is a good thing. And, and I have enjoyed, you know, when somebody's dog or cat pops up across the screen or the kid comes in, you know, because they fell and they need mom to put a Band-Aid on or dad to, to get them a drink of water or something. You know, this people, we're human. We need to remember that we're not computers. This is, this is a good thing. Um, so the other thing with tapping into creativity is that it helps us build our leadership. Regardless of where we are in the hierarchy in our organization, we all need to be leaders. We need to, to all do that. Um, and we need to help others do that as well. Um, we're not just, we can't just sit back and follow um, along anymore. The things are changing too fast to be able to do that. So here is our, ooh, um, here is our activity that we're going to do. We're okay for time, so we can still do that. So I'm going to ask you to um, get out a piece of paper. It doesn't have to be a fancy piece of paper. I'm using a scrap piece of paper, something I had printed out the other day that I was editing. I'm going to use the back of one of those pieces of paper. So, um, so get a piece of paper in a pen or a pencil or a marker, whatever you got handy. I got a pen, I got a fancy pen that's got four colors in it. Um, I'm gonna use that, I'm gonna choose a color. So um, pick, pick a pen or a pencil, let's say something to make a mark with and a piece of paper. Um, I'm guessing the person that's in the gym maybe can't really do this. Um, so you're going to have to just bear with us while we do this activity. Um, and yes, yeah, certainly if you're driving, you can't do this either. So you just have to put up with us. We're going to, we're going to um, take our pens and our paper. I have five minutes on my timer on my phone. We're going to, for five minutes, just doodle, just draw. Um, sometimes people want to keep the pen or the, the pencil on the paper the whole time. You don't have to, you can lift it up and move it around, you can doodle a bunch of circles or squares or triangles or this picture that's on the slide actually comes from a, from a workshop I did a couple of years ago. Um, and so you can see they've done all kinds of, of things and, and pick the pen up or the, their pencil up um, lots of times and start again. So, but the idea is that you're making a mark for um, five, for the five minutes. Um, yeah, don't worry about what it is. Just keep making marks, some kind of marks, big, small, whatever grabs you. So if everybody's ready. I am going to start our timer. Ready, set, go. I'm going to draw two.
if your page gets full, just keep drawing over top of what's there. Just keep going. You got uh, two and a half minutes left. So you're only halfway there. Okay, thank you, whoops. So how was that um, for, for everybody? Did you notice any changes? I'll hold, no, I will admit that I cheated a little bit because um, I was filling with the Zoom interface, trying to make it look the way that I wanted it to look for me. Uh, in the presenter view. So um, I partly reused one that I did yesterday. So this is me cheating. Um, but what I found with it both yesterday and today um, was that when I did straight lines, I was very serious and and um, yeah, just very serious about, about things and, and almost angry somehow. But as soon as I started doing looping, you know, all the circles and things that, that you see there, it just made me happy. I got this spontaneous smile on, on my face. So it, it was interesting to, to notice that, that shift um, and lesson for me to um, draw circles when I, when I wanna be happy. Um, shift my energy so um was there a rhythm to your doodles yeah what, let's see what's in the the chat box so uh difficult i found it difficult at first and then started flowing yeah sometimes it takes a bit to get going um yeah walking the dreamscape yeah thank you great anybody else want to type um, something in the chat or unmute and, and share Okay, I'm gonna go on. So from a leadership perspective, what happens when we activate our, our creativity? So creative leadership, there's there's been studies done and this actually comes from an article that was published in Harvard Business Review in 2010. Um, a study they, they did um, found that creative leadership provided six times higher revenue growth. So there's a benefit there, six times, that's not something to sneeze at. Um, 
it increases employee engagement, which is a great thing. Um, so decreases turnover um, and um, yeah, and all the costs then associated with onboarding. Um, and um, yeah, it means taking more calculated risks and innovating and how to lead and, and communicate. So it feeds into some of that stuff that we were talking about at the, the top of how people want to be, want to work and, and dealing with FUCA. Um, creative leaders are ready to question the status quo. So they're not about keeping things the same as we've always, always done them. Um, they're, they're open to bringing in um, experimentation and disruptive business solutions and doing things differently. So this all comes out of creative leadership. Um, also from a leadership perspective, it's about creating an, an environment um, where everyone, not just management, and this is a key thing, it's not just management, it's everybody, is empowered to use creative thinking skills to improve the organization. It doesn't necessarily mean that everybody's generating idea, ideas, but rather that everyone can ask questions and challenge the, the status quo and become personally accountable for implementing any solutions that they might um, see that would improve the workplace and for employees, for internal and for external, for customers. So um, there's, I'm gonna share a couple of um, case studies with you. And um, this one in particular, I, I like because it was came out of the um, information, sorry, innovation and knowledge services department in the, the Danish government. And they were having issues around collaboration and knowledge sharing in particular between two departments, the lawmaking department and the citizen services department. And as you might imagine that these two groups had to work together quite often. And so being able to collaborate and communicate well and share knowledge was, was key to their success. And yet it was something that they really did not do, do well at all. And so the IKS, um, team was tasked with improving the situation, you know, being the knowledge management team, they were, you know, expected to help the, the, these two teams hopefully break through their problems and be able to collaborate and share uh, knowledge much, much better, more effectively to solve problems and to create um, solutions for, for citizens. So, they spent a year actually putting together a studio, um, figuring out what materials and things they needed. So they had all kinds of, of materials to create models and to paint and to draw and, and do all th kinds of creative things um, st um, stocked in this the studio space that they created. Um, they also spent the year um, preparing to and creating a model and a framework and that were that enabled participants to, to develop new and innovative solutions. So they, they created a process basically um, for, for all of this, for applying creativity. And so in the end, they, when they, they launched it after the year of planning and preparation and, and things, these two lawmaking and citizen services teams came in and, and started to work together. And there were some challenges initially because it's new and, and different, but but they ended up coming up with new and innovative solutions to the problems that they were facing and improved their collaboration and their knowledge sharing and the solutions that they were coming up with. And, and they ended up running this, this studio for a couple of years until unfortunately they had to change offices and in the new office space, unfortunately they weren't given space for the studio, but, but it had really resolved. Um, the, the challenges that they had been facing um, the, between these two departments. Some other companies who have embraced creativity and, and innovation in their activities. So we have Xerox, um, who had an artist in residence program. Um, they brought in artists to work in the R&D department with the scientists and the artists challenge the, the scientists to come up with new ways of doing things. They, they had questions and wanted to do things with the technology that the scientists were developing that the scientists had never thought of or considered. Um, but the, the artists wanted to make art. And so they asked for all kinds of functionality and, and capabilities um, to be 
am created and embedded and, and put into these products. So the, the pilot was supposed to go for, the program was supposed to go for a year, um, ended up going for, for five or six and um, was hugely successful. Um, it shut down after uh, five or six years because as often happens, and I'm sure all of you have seen this in your organizations or in organizations you've worked with, once sometimes when top management comes in and changes, they don't always see the purpose behind what was being done. And so they put their stamp on things and, and change what was being done. And so that's what happened at Xerox. The, the VP responsible changed or the executive responsible changed. And, um, and so it, uh, the resident artist in residence program got, got shut down. So, um, but there is a great book that was published that documents, it's two or 300 pages, it documents all of the, the things that they did and the results and, and things. So at least that was um, saved for those of us who might want to take it up in our, our organizations. And Equiva Services, um, it's a company in the oil and gas field. So very traditional, very analytical and rational, but also trying to bring um, their, their company forward into the, the 21st century. And so they um, brought some creativity and, and some art space um, activities into their, their organization to try and um, create a new, um, vision for the, the future. So they went out and looked at art and, and had a bunch of um, field trips and things to go out and look at things and, and consider. And this helped them become more curious into dialogue and create some stories and, and to reflect into what they had seen and how that might be adapted for their, their organization. And so it helped them um, create simple ideas, but very powerful ideas at the same time. And then we have LexisNexis, um, who has incorporated improv into their corporate training and development program. And this has improved communication, um, which is key, certainly, in knowledge transfer and, and knowledge sharing and collaboration, as well as empathy, which, again, is really important in the work that, that we're doing in knowledge management. So, um, Heather, it's telling me you have your hand raised. Would you like to? Thank you. I have a question for you, Stephanie. Okay. Um, thanks. Um, with this piece that you're talking about right now, something just struck me as I was listening to this because I, I just reread your paper again. So this is really fresh in my mind. And I was curious whether you've read about or, or you have experience with companies who use um, the creation or refreshing of their branding as kind of an exercise for everybody to get involved and kind of feel the creativity of describing who and what that organization is? No, hmm. no, none, none of the companies that I've worked directly with, I, that, wasn't, that wasn't what we were doing. And I'm trying to think if any of the case studies that I have read have come at, at that. I think it's an interesting, um, possible approach to, to refreshing the branding. Um, yeah, but I don't think, no, I don't think I've seen that. I don't think okay. I've seen a case study on that, but that's right. an interesting idea. Cool, thanks. Um, okay, you're welcome. Um, yeah, so creativity, all these creative activities, there's different ways to bring it into the organization and, and to see results. Um, so yeah, so those are just there's there's lots of case studies out there, um, more than I realized <laughs> to be honest until I started researching for the the paper um, that I that I wrote that Heather just mentioned. So um, yeah, so why now? Because we're trying to be more agile, design thinking and, and agile are both somehow about bringing creativity into our workplace. They're, they're very rational and analytical about it, but it still is somehow creativity. New work talks about bringing in, um, bringing the whole, our whole selves to, to work. Sustainability it has all of these similar behaviors um, to that tie into creativity and, and COVID, you know, we, bringing creativity in helps us be more resilient and adaptable. So 
all of those things are looking for the same kinds of behaviors, these sustainable mindsets and having a sense of purpose and seeing the bigger picture and, and relationship building and, and diversity and networking and you know, open-mindedness and being curious, all of, all, the, all of these things. So are all somehow part of, of these things and more. <laughs> and, and they answer, again, the question that we started off at the, the beginning with about how to make our workplaces more um, friendly for our, our staff and how to deal with VUCA. It's these, it's in enabling these. So they come out of tapping into our, our creativity. So this is why it's um, um, time for radical knowledge management and time for creativity. And before we get to questions, I'm going to do a quick poll here and we're going to do it old school because um, I didn't get it set up in the in Zoom. So the first so please answer this in the chat window for poll question one. Um, would you be interested in taking a short course, two or three hours on Radical KM? And if, if yes, either yes is self-paced or a live virtual um, course, or no, you're not interested at, at all. So I'll give you a minute to, um, to respond to that. So the, yeah. So it would be, yeah, two or three hours, so either self-paced or virtual, or you think that's a terrible idea and not what you want to do, <laughs> which is fine. We're all a little Zoom fatigued at this point. So everybody got an answer in? I can give you another second to put an answer in. Okay. Thank you for responding. I'm gonna to flip to the next question. There's three questions, by the way. So the second question is, would you be interested in a course where you could become certified in radical knowledge management? And it would be a two or three day um, course. So yes, and your options are yes, a two day course. Yes, a three day course. Yes, either length is fine or no, not interested. So um, yeah, Eric and I are, are planning on some stuff there. So um, this helps give us an idea of, to know whether we're completely out in left field or if, if people are, how interested people are, are in this idea. So and Stephanie, yeah. I was just gonna say real, real quick that uh, everyone involved here, we're going to save the chat and put the numbers together, crunch the numbers uh, and add that to the first uh, webinar where we did a similar poll and um, we can present th those results to the entire guest list uh, as to who is interested in what kind of thing. So um, we'll review all this, yep. Yeah, 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 we did the same poll in the last one. So if everybody has responded on this one, I will go to the third question. And if a Radical KM certification course would be held virtually, because I'm in Berlin um, and I'm afraid to leave my apartment. <laughs> no, I'm not really, but I'm not really keen on getting on a plane. Um, <laughs> would you prefer it to be an all day, every day, you know, consecutive days um, or broken down into pieces and spread over a time, longer timeline? So all day, every day. So like a Monday and a Tuesday, back to back or broken down like four Monday afternoons or four Monday mornings or something you need to figure out the time zones um, but broken down into two smaller four four hour pieces or four three hour pieces or something whatever whatever we figure out so yeah if you can share your thoughts on on that those two possibilities um, yeah as Eric said we'll tabulate all of this and and put it with the, the results from the last um, webinar and, and see where things stand. So that's great. Has everybody, everybody contributed to the poll? Hopefully most people have. Um, so thank you for, for that. 
Um, that's my contact information. The Radical KM article um, is just in the final throes of being published. It's going to be published in the um, Frontiers in Artificial Intelligence, AI and Business. There's a special KM knowledge management um, edition being put together and, and be published later on. I'm hoping that'll be available um, electronically in the next couple of weeks because I have had the author's proofs. Um, I got sub resubmitted them or submitted the author's proof on Friday. So um, they're doing some edits and, and so that means it's getting closer. So you can sign up, that's a, their web page. You can sign up to be um, notified about when it's, when it's released. Although I'm sure that Eric will put it in the, the KMI newsletter so you can, can always get it from there as well. So, but that's, that's that. Um, there's a book list um, uh, and I recently added an eighth book to it. Um, the, the play, How It Shapes the Brain, Opens the Imagination and Invigorates the Soul. Um, I listened to that audio book this weekend. Um, and yeah, so I added it to the list because it's got some really good ideas and ties into to the ideas of adding creativity into, into um, KM and into our workplaces. So, and some ways to activate creativity. Um, yeah, a couple of online courses that I created and um, some other stuff, the Radical KM website. So, but back to questions. <laughs> if you have any questions after all this, um, I'm going to stop sharing this so I can see people. Um, yeah, and so, yeah. Feel free to unmute and ask a question if you like. Um, if you would like to turn your video on, you can do that too. Although if your connectivity is a problem, don't worry about it. Just, and if your connectivity is a problem, you want to type, that's fine too. We can, we can do with that. But yeah, does anybody have any questions? Do you think I'm completely out of my mind trying to add creativity <laughs> into things? Do you think this is fantastic? Long overdue. Um, wondering why you didn't think of it. <laughs> um, what What are you thinking? And uh, and Stephanie, while we wait for any uh, questions from the audience, um, I thought I would let everyone know that we are debuting uh, the first Radical KM certification course uh, in October. Um, Stephanie and I have come up with dates. It'll be uh, actually um, spread out um, two Wednesdays back to back. So the 20th and the 27th, we thought that might be more interesting than two consecutive days. So then you can do some, uh, a little bit of um, side work in between the two uh, sessions and then come back together on that second day and discuss that. So um, that's what we're going to try for this debut. Um, I'll be making a major announcement here shortly. Uh, so everyone in this guest list will get um, um, uh, a summary of that and uh, links to, to, uh, to go to for more information. So I just want to make sure everyone knew about that. Um, that's coming up next. Yeah, we thought the the um, two Wednesdays in a row was a, a compromise between two days back to back or or four, you know, half days. So, because mm -hmm. um, this work needs some reflection and it's different and it's unusual and yeah, so we need some. I felt it was important to give some time to reflect and, and maybe assign some homework um, to do in between the two classes. So, yeah. So I'm excited about that. So any questions? Stun silence. <laughs> I'm a little worried. No, no, no. I don't, oh, somebody's. Oh, thank you, Herbert. I'm glad you're excited. <laughs> thank you. So anybody? No? Shall we wrap it up, Eric? Sure, yeah. Uh, oh, Linda. Oh, sorry, Linda's, oh, Linda's clapping. Sorry, I thought that was a hand up. <laughs> Go ahead, Eric. It's like Herbert wants to apply what, what he just learned. Uh, no, this is good. We're getting uh, some positive feedback. Uh, so we're going to go with this momentum and put this together uh, as a course. Um, so uh, you'll uh, learn more about those details and what you can expect uh, if you're interested. And uh, again, we do have these webinars recorded. So I will we'll send the recording 
Uh, once we edit this in a couple of days, we'll send this recording out to everyone. If you're not already a KMI subscriber, you can always join for free and you'll get updated on all these webinars and, and great content that Stephanie is a part of and, and other um, consultants and authors that we are working with. So uh, thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, unless there's any other last minute questions, uh, yes, you'll get the recording, Emily. Um, so we'll make sure that uh, everyone on this guest list gets that first. Uh, let's see, is there any other? Is Manuka, did you have a question? Uh, yeah. I just want to, this is my first uh, seminar, first uh, webinar that I connected with you. Okay. So just, uh, just one quick question. If I'm to explain somebody, what is radical knowledge management? So you see the difference between the creativity and pooling ideas and doing it in a, in a, in a quick and radical way rather than depending on your knowledge store and all that stuff. Am I correct? Yeah, it's, it's about helping people tap into their creativity so they can deal with the, the constant change and the, the sort of the chaos that we, we deal with and learn because continuous learning is so important now, now more than ever, just because everything changes all the time. So, but yeah, so creativity and, and radical KM is about helping facilitating that, that process and helping people relearn that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's more or less, it's not knowledge management, but knowledge resourcing and sharing and putting it in action. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. And it, it might be worth noting, uh, Stephanie, that with our CKS program, the specialist certification, it comes with two, two parts. The first part actually is um, the, the, the basics of KM, the KM Foundation course. That's about 10 hours of online content. And we, what we do mm -hmm. is we, we marry that with this new, what we would call a master course with Stephanie, uh, a master class in radical KM and, and creative KM. So um, anyone with, with no background in KM could start this, this course and get the raw basics from, from KMI and then get the, the master class education from, from Stephanie. Uh, and that's how these CKS programs work. So um, again, designed to be so that uh, you don't have to have a background in KM necessarily. Uh, to start these and take a deep dive into a, spe a specific topic like like radical KM. Yeah, Eric, did you see the question from Joy in the chat window? Yes, got my certification through KMI years ago. This is my first seminar I've attended. Are we still able to access these old courses? Sure. Um, yes, Joy, you and any other um, alum uh, would be able to um, access that content through our LMS or learning management portal. Uh, so um, you can reach out to me separately, or if you just want to email our, um, my team email here is training at kminstitute.org, goes to my team, so whoever is first to respond, and then we can look up your, your status at the LMS and make sure you still have access to that content. So that's for any, any of our past grads who might be on this uh, call. Great. Thanks. Any last questions? Anything else we need to share, Eric? I think we're good. Okay. Excellent. Well, thank you everyone so much for coming today and hanging out with us for the last hour. I hope that you enjoyed it and I look forward to staying in touch. Bye. Thank you, Stephanie. Thanks.